It has been a week tracking Aaron, which is now re-intensifying back to a major hurricane. But what's next? Hi, everybody. I'm Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice, watching all this so closely for you, paying attention to the models and, more importantly, paying attention to the satellite as we watch what's happening with Aaron here as it continues to move off toward the north and east. It has grown in size. This storm system is almost 700 miles wide. Can you believe that? That thing is a monster right now. And unfortunately, it is continuing to intensify as it moves off toward the north and west. Folks, I drop multiple videos like this during hurricane season, keeping you up to date around the clock with new models. So if you're new to this page, please subscribe, turn on notifications, and let me know where in the comment section you're watching from right now. You guys are becoming like family. I love tracking this stuff with you, and you know, I'm going to continue to do it, whether it be hurricane season, wintry season, severe weather season, whatever comes up that's a big weather other events, you can bet that I'm going to be on top of it here for you. Uh, Aaron's not the only thing. Look at these waves setting up. This is almost textbook hurricane kind of time frames here as it is the peak of hurricane season as we're seeing these waves come on off the coast of Africa one after another. It's the wave train as we call it. Uh, Aaron gaining intensity, gaining organization. That eye just so, so violent right now as it's just offshore of the Outer Banks and that big push of water coming inland right there. The problem is this storm system over, is over the warmest part of the Atlantic right now. New models in show this monster just re-intensifies back to a Cat 3, 120 mile per hour peak winds right here offshore of the Outer Banks. If it's doing this much to the, the, to the shoreline right now and it's couple hundred miles offshore. Imagine what it would have done with a landfall. You've got this big push of water in, folks, and some of the waves in the Carolina, South Carolina coast, they've been six, seven foot tall. You I mean, they look big, but it's just the, the power behind them. Does that make sense? You can just tell they have a lot of force with them, and it's because of this big push of water coming from the south and east. Look at the wind speeds. I mean, it's going to be a rough day for the Mid-Atlantic tomorrow. Anybody watching right now from Jersey? We've got a lot of wind, a lot of rain right now. Uh, this is going to be just offshore rain-wise, but this wind is pushing in, and that rip current in the surf is just so, so violent. You can see it here on our high-resolution models uh, really, really well uh, as it shows this moving just offshore of the Outer Banks and then skirting up to the north. I mean, it's curving, but it's not it's not that far offshore of some big cities here along the East Coast. So that big rush of water is going to just beat up and down the coastline right here. And you can see from our wind model, look at this thing. I mean, it is just textbook, dangerous, violent as it pulls away becomes less of an issue by Friday. But then what's next? Well, for the East Coast, there's going to be a big cold front come through. That looks to keep the Bermuda high in a place. It's going to allow this system, which does look to become Fernand, to stay out to sea. Bermuda, we're watching it for you. In northern part of the Caribbean islands here, watching it for you, but it looks like if it forms, it's going to go quickly to the north. And there is another area that we're watching here that has a chance to become a name system, but the models are just really not keen on either of these, especially the European model. It's just not buying it. Let's flip back to the last full run. It shows Aaron pulling away. Got a little lower pressure right here trailing behind it, but because it's right behind Aaron, that upwelling from Aaron and the cooler water in the Atlantic, not really giving it much chance to, to get going. I mean, so you don't have much going. By Sunday, Monday, you got a cold front coming through the East Coast. That's going to make it actually feel really nice next week. A little taste of fall for the Carolinas, Georgia, Tennessee. We're talking highs in the 70s, lows in the 50s, 40s even for the Western North Carolina mountains. Now, things change for us into Labor Day. Big Ridge starts to build in here. So Labor Day weekend, honestly, as of right now, looking pretty good across the southeast. Florida to the Carolinas, you got beach plans, you got pool plans, watching some football. Looking great. Looking really nice, actually. And I don't see much cropping up tropical wise in that time frame. Now, folks, we still have a lot of hurricane season to go, so don't let your guard down by any means. But it does look like we get a little bit of a break after whatever's going on out there kind of kicks out. Your AI model. Got a little something here, probably for non. But going through Labor Day, Big Ridge, not seeing anything. How about the week after Labor Day? GFS has been sent, hitting at something down here in the Caribbean or Bay of Campeche. Not much. Not much cooking. How about the GFS model? Yeah, I see it there. There's Aaron. There's a little guy behind Aaron. Not 
really seeing much. You get here past Labor Day. I mean, this is really far out in the models. This would be Labor Day night into Tuesday. You'd have a little something cropping up here, trying to move west, possibly getting into Texas or Louisiana. That's one run of the GFS model, but not seeing much cropping up here. In fact, Aaron's moving away. You got Fernan possibly becoming a tropical storm and then moving toward the north, well east of Bermuda. And you got this little, this little thing over here. This will be short-lived. A little something trying to form here in the Southern Caribbean, but Central America would be where that could be heading and just not seeing anything beyond that. So folks, it, it, if we're looking for trends here, like we do in hurricane season, trends are looking good right now, which that's great, right? We'll count our blessings while we can. Like I say, in the hottest part of summer here, we've been dealing with cooler weather where I'm at in the Carolinas. And I like to say, hey, we just made it through 10 days of the hottest part of summer without heat <laughs> when we were so cool. I like to say that with the tropics. If we can get through air in here and we can get Fernand to stay out to sea, it looks like we're going to enter a period of probably 10 days, which would be 10 days during the peak of hurricane season that not much is cooking out there. A-okay with me. Folks, uh, thank you for following along with me. I am on top of all the trends here for you. And as we track Aaron getting closer to the Carolinas tomorrow, I'll be on top of it for you. Please subscribe to the channel if you don't already and let me know where you're watching from. I'll continue to keep these videos coming your way. I like to respect your time. So some of these are a little more long-winded and um, in-depth. And I will start to get a little more in-depth on the cold front coming our way next week. Who sees what? Who's going to see some storms out of it? Where could we see some severe weather? But right now, I mean... We're looking okay. We're, we're looking okay with Aaron pulling away and that threat that looked to be quite formidable, honestly, for a secondary threat coming to the United States, looking better, looking better. The trends are in our favor, at least. You know, if something changes, I will keep you posted. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll keep you posted.